Hello, Plinkers and Tinkerers, and everybody training with the Crossman AR platform. I'm sorry it took uh, this long for me to make a part two for my tips and trick video, but it's finally here, and please bear with me. I promise you, I will go through the full breakdown of this video. I will show you everything that's inside here, and... I guess along those lines, this is kind of good news, bad news. The good news is I was 99% accurate with my tips and tricks videos. Uh, and the bad news is I was 99% accurate with my tips and tricks videos. So uh, I will be making a full, complete reassembly video. But for now... We're going to go with a break, basic full breakdown and I'm going to cover all the everything, all the problems that we did not cover in my tips and tricks. So before I keep on babbling, uh, my tips and tricks video, guys, my part one for this magazine is still valid. If you're having issues with CO2 dumping after your magazine, uh, after your plinking session, or if you've had a mag for one or two years and you're starting to have issues with it, uh, my full break, my part one video tips and tricks is, is good enough for you. And as I mentioned in that video, Big J's Outdoors and Air Guns, his proof video, I will put a link in this video. It is also still valid. Uh, maybe a small correction. Uh, Big J's video, I would, I would say that right now that's a, it's still a proof video, but uh, it you can add on to beyond proving if your magazine is leaking anywhere. Uh, that video, after thousands of shots through your magazine, if you're having issues, you go through Big J's video, and you will dislodge the internal valve here. So Big J's video. Even after all this time, it's still valid. If you're be if you're having issues after thousands and thousands of rounds, or you suspect the valve is getting jammed, then uh, Big J's video will most definitely unjam the valve. Okay, so let's get right into it. We are breaking down this this magazine. Uh, in Big J's video and in my part one tips and tricks, I do show you how to separate the upper part from the lower part. And the only thing I'll add to that is these two pins that are here. These are uh, these are three thirty seconds. I might have said one sixteenth, but you can use a three thirty seconds punch. One eighth is probably gonna be too tight, and you're gonna shear your bores so go with a three thirty seconds punch now and also recap you're going to need a small phillips to take off the plastic bits and these two small screws here and the other screw at the bottom here for your your um, magazine follower so these are other tools and again go watch my tips and tricks go watch big j's video because uh for the basic stuff, that's still 100% accurate. So now, once we have these two parts separated, I'm going to save the internal check valve for last. So let's just knock out the upper, the upper part of your magazine. Now, using the same Phillips, the small Phillips that just barely fits into, into these, into your magazine holes. You're going to use that Phillips and you're going to remove the three screws on the front side of, of your magazine. Now, once you remove these three screws, uh, you, you will have to be careful because as most of you probably have noticed, there is a small magnet inside here that helps cycle your BBs into the chamber as you're firing. And it's probably there, especially for the full auto. So we're going to remove these three little screws. I already have them started. They might be tight, 
just make sure you use the proper size Phillips. So I'm just going to take these out of the threads. I'm going to remove this and here is the magnet alert. There's a magnet inside here and it's pretty powerful. It'll stick to your screwdriver. It'll fly out and go stick to anything. It'll stick to this upper part. You don't want to lose this little magnet. So your magnet's going to be right here. Because I already took my mag out, I have it out and I have it separated because I know this guy is going to go flying. It's just a little tiny magnet. So that guy, this little magnet goes into the slot right up top here. It has to be properly positioned. I have gotten multiple comments about people... Uh, when they load a BB, so let's just, I'm just going to take a BB. This is why I'm not going through the, the full unscrew every thread on video, because I want to cover all these little problems at the same time. So I get a lot of comments that it appears, see mine, even this one, it seems as if the BB is not perfectly centered. And I totally agree. It does seem like it's not centered. But I've had comments where people say that it's, they only see half the BB here. So if you're only seeing half the BB and your crossman is not firing, that means I'm 99% sure either this little magnet here it's either sideways and it's not positioned properly or it's shattered or it's just completely missing. I don't think it can wear out because I'm pretty sure these little magnets will shatter before they wear out from BB impacts. But uh, yeah, that's one of the problems with these magazines is some people, if your BB is sticking out uh, if you can only see half your BB, you should at least see 85 to 90% of your BB. It's not a big issue. I've never had it. They all seem to be too high. And I'll, I'll probably figure out a fix to shim this magnet so that I can properly center these BBs. And then maybe we can improve our ballistics even more. But yeah, that's that's a comment. And that's at this step when you remove this you make sure you keep track of this little magnet because it's going to fly halfway across your table and stick to anything steel. And if you lose that magnet, you'll probably have issues in full auto and maybe lock back and all those little functions that you take for we all take for granted. Uh, along the, the same note, we have all this off. There are people... Uh, I have seen in forums and I've received comments. People are receiving their mags, not with a BB. People are receiving their mags, brand new mags with BBs stuck inside the spring already. And maybe people with the, because let's face it, this is the catch here wears out and it might slip and slide and then you jam a BB into your springs. Um, in my previous video, I recommended as you do all this, you just replace your spring or, or, or fix it. But you can remove the BB uh, before disassembling. You will need small pointy tools, as in a small Allen key or precision screwdriver or some pick tool. And if your BB is stuck in there, then... You jam one of these tools and you can pull your spring back. You pull your spring back gently. Don't force anything. Make sure your tool fits. If you force it, you're going to kink your spring. Don't jam anything. See, now I'm jamming it just by showing you while I'm looking through my camera. Whew. See, I almost scrapped my spring. But you can ease your spring back into this opening and let the BB fall out. It will take you just some small precision screwdrivers. All right, so that's for the BB follower and maybe possible malfunctions you can have with your actual crossman. Um, there isn't, 
I can't think of any other issues you could have with the BB follower or this BB here. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Make sure your magnet is properly positioned. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll be doing a full reassembly video, and I'll go over my 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 tips and tricks for reassembling. But just to complete as a part two full breakdown, that's what's gonna happen. So if your spring is not mangled, you can get your BB out. If you take it out and your spring is mangled, it's just a small spring like I mentioned in my tips and tricks, you can replace that. So, before again, before we get into the check valve, let's finish up with the top part. So, you have this metal part here. I wouldn't recommend using the same Phillips as these tiny tiny pinholes. It's one size bigger so it's at least a number one maybe a number two don't scrap this screw so you you're gonna take it out um i have seen comments i have received comments and i have seen in the forums that this metal part here has can break if you've been shooting thousands and of rounds and it breaks after that then maybe uh, I can't really diagnose that, but if you just receive your mag and it's your first plinking session and you break this metal part, it's not that big of a deal. This rubber bushing that it's retaining in place is just a bushing uh, between your um, your hammer and the pin and the 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 valve striker pin. It the only purpose of this is to hold this bushing in place. It's gonna absorb impacts. It's not an actual seal, but I would recommend if it's brand new and it breaks, send it back. Contact Crossman. Uh, if it's been thousands of thousands of rounds, then you only need to figure out how to maintain this bushing into place so that the hammer doesn't. Or the chip in the hammer doesn't get damaged prematurely. Okay, so now the internal valve. This is your blowback and the actual valve that controls the power on your on your BB. Uh, I highly recommend that you get a um, a snap ring plier kit. There, yeah, this is part of the one percent bad news. So taking this apart is not really a big issue but you do need a few I would highly recommend you get the right tools you could maybe get uh, just use needle nose pliers but uh, I I took apart uh, four of my magazines and three of them they just normally ease out of I can unscrew them with minimal pressure using my pliers here but I do have one of my magazines. Uh, now it looks mangled. So these scratches here on this side is me. But you see this deep groove? Yeah, let's get it into the focus. Yeah, this deep groove right here. This is Crossman. Crossman did this groove uh, as they assembled it. And it just so happened this is one of my magazines that I actually dropped on the floor. And it's partly why I took this one apart, because you can see this edge here is, is kind kind of dented. But yeah, Crossman had issues turning this in, and they scrapped the brass. And now I, I'm not able to unscrew it. So if you take, that's a, an easy verification. If you just remove this one screw, take off this plate and the bu and this bushing, if you see this brass piece is all mangled, send it back to Crossman. Uh, I can't take this one out. It still works though. It was still working and I can still use it. It's not, it's just I cannot take it apart. So I highly recommend you use proper tools for this. And the way I did it is 
you you click them into place and then I just hold it down with my my thumb and I'm pushing down here and I'm just rotating with with the pliers. I'm not pushing down or anything. I'm just rotating and three of my four mags just came out with no effort. So now it's it's going to spring up. There is spring alert. There is a spring under there. So we don't need these anymore. We're going to remove the brass bushing. Now on here, here's an O-ring that, and you can see there, there aren't many threads. So you don't have to over tighten this, but this O-ring has to be properly, this black one has to be properly seated. And you do have another O-ring inside here. And this is the O-ring that it, it's going to, it seems, as far as I can tell, it's just going to balance out the pressure and the seal between the firing pressure and the blowback pressure. So this seal, just make sure it's clean. Don't remove it. I wouldn't remove it unless you can visually see it's completely destroyed. Now, once you have these parts removed, there's still a spring and there's multiple parts in here. So we're going to take them out one by one. So we have our spring and our blowback, kind of our blowback chamber and the CO2 orifices. Orifices? Orifice? Okay. And then we have our shooting piston this the the co2 piston with an a metal washer we got another spring for that piston and inside here we have multiple o-rings and another uh bushing in there we're just gonna maybe i can get them out with a couple of taps there okay a couple of taps and they all came out so you got your first o-ring that serves as a seal for this washer. Then you're gonna have another little metal, metal bushing. Inside that is the bushing for this piston here. And then there's another O-ring for this shim in here. And we're not done. Can I get light in here? Eesh, not really. There's another little metal bushing in here. So if you look down the hole right here, the bore, you will be able to visibly see it. On mine, on all the ones I inspected, there, the little bushing in here is centered. It's not damaged. It, it looks like it can be more, it could be better uh, polished, better uh, finishing on it, but I can see that it's even inside and it's even on the outside and there's no, I cannot see any major scratches on the, and you, it's on the inside. I would recommend that you do not try to remove this. If you slam a punch onto the outside of this, it most definitely will mushroom out. Anyways, okay, I won't get too much. I recommend you leave that in there unless you can visibly see it's damaged. And if it's visibly damaged, then you send it back to Crossman. All right, so that's the upper part of our our magazine. Now, ev what everybody's been waiting for, what does the internal check valve look like? And here's part partially why I'm very proud of my diagnosis uh, a year ago because uh, I called a ball bearing and it is a ball bearing in there. Um, I did get a couple of comments uh, about me not showing my screwdriver setup or using a valve tool. Uh, you could get a valve tool, but I have not... I haven't seen online any valve tools that I could just buy for five or ten bucks that fits all the way through this and I can keep keep straight. So I would you could buy one of these valve tools and cut it or take it apart and jerry rig a screwdriver just for your crossman mags. That's fine. But like I re recommended in my tips and tricks, if you have the Umarex 
uh, air, air gun kit. Uh, their biggest screwdriver fits. If I just take the locking ring, you can see that the, the screwdriver, it, it just fits perfectly on that locking ring. And if you can have a screwdriver that fits on these two notches, oh, there it goes. On these two notches here, well, you're not going to damage your uh, piercing pin. So, uh, yeah, my rig looks like this. I, I just, I use my flat tip. I let it fall into the barrel. I put my extension on the bottom here. And then I can go and get my retaining ring. I can go and get my retaining ring and I always be gentle and be careful. You're going to unscrew it. There should be no resistance, especially on the first slot. So you're going to unscrew that. And while we're talking about retaining rings and people telling me that I did not show just how much to tighten. When if your only issue is the CO2 dumping, then the, you can see the notch here. Usually on either side, whatever, wherever side it's dumping out or it's not dumping out, you probably only need like a millimeter. You only need to turn it for one millimeter or slack it one milli. It's never a full turn. You're only just going to need to snug it just a, just a one degree, just a little, a little notch. So again, I was 99% right on my tips and tricks video. Because um, these green seals in here do not always just just fall out. Uh, this one should. It's the fir your first slot should fall out. I'm just gonna tap it. Let's see now I'm having issues, so I'm just gonna. You're gonna want to push in a little bit on your piercing needle. And you you should be able to get with minimal effort you should be able to get this green retaining seal out there we go and this is why again in my first video I recommend you don't don't pull these out if you don't have to absolutely pull these out because you do have to pull these green seals through your your threads now once you have your retaining ring out you have your seal out you are going to have your your piercing uh, needle that's going to just fall out and you will have a filter after that that comes and seals inside all right so now we got our first port out retaining ring seal piercing needle there's nothing else to this so if you're having issues and it's leaking out the first you just have to tighten it a little bit the first valve will not affect the performance of the check valve so that's my one percent part of where i was wrong one year ago in my tips and tricks is on the first valve you only need to make sure that once you screw in your first it does not come out the first if it doesn't come out the first that means your seal is fine on your first co2 so i've had this covered since the beginning and you might have noticed and here we go this is what everybody is looking for and been waiting for I still, one year later, have not found anything online covering the second, uh, the second CO2 or the internal check valve. So here it is, guys, and here's why I still say my tips and tricks. My other video is still good for your CO2s because I did call. The only thing I was wrong about was I thought the ball bearing. Whoop. Well, don't lose it. Nope. Oh. Whew. Yeah, there we go. I tinker and I never lose it and I almost lost it filming my video. Be careful. 
little bearing part. I can't even pick it up. There we go. So this little guy, I thought it was moving back and forth, but it's caught in a recess. Can I get that? See, that's where that ball bearing is positioned. If I block this, if you have been, if you took this apart, you can look down and shine light and you'll see that little ball bearing. And when it's not there, you can even see light shining through it. So don't lose this little ball bearing because, uh, yeah, that's, you absolutely need this guy for the second to work and the check valve to work. Uh, this little uh, seal slash bushing here. I wouldn't recommend pulling any of this out unless you absolutely have to, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, if your magazine is brand new and you're having issues, I would recommend to send it back. If you're a tinkerer and you know you can fix it, then go ahead. But this blue blue bushing is really recessed inside its slot. You will have to jam a pick thingy in there. It's not an easy removal. And and as you all know, anything that's hard enough to pry out a, a perfectly slotted bushing, you might damage it, you might scratch it. Uh, so, yeah, unless you're really motivated and you have and and you you feel you can fix it this second co2 valve i would not recommend if you have to it's not all lost because you're probably going to damage your green seal but when you reassemble you just take the green seal from your second port and you put it in your first port and you use the clean one that probably just fell out of your your first port you put that in the second then you reassemble it and you don't ever touch it ever again uh, it, until you shoot thousands and thousands of rounds. But uh, I'm telling you guys, I've played tens of thousands of rounds out of all my Crossmans, out of all these magazines. And even this guy is one of my oldest. I haven't, it's the same one as my magazine. I still haven't tinkered with it. Um, this is as dirty as all these little slots were. So one Q-tip, all these inside bores and inside slots, they weren't that dirty. So most likely, the problem is your magazine is not dirty. It's either, if you're having performance issues, some of these O-rings might be kinked and not be seated properly. So you go through Big J's video, you go through my tips and tricks. If you're having issues with the valve here, then these... All this assembly here might be kinked. These O-rings might be damaged. This is an easy fix. You could probably even replace these O-rings with just regular black O-rings. Um, but if you're having issues with your CO2 dump and uh, you cannot unjam this bearing, the, the check valve, out of its seat, if you can't clean it out by removing this screw... And doing Big J's video and just screwing in a second and pushing all the debris out. Then your magazine might be completely finished. Um, these guys work great. I don't think there's any other problems that you guys, that the, you know, that we might be uh, encountering. Uh, there's a reassembly video that will be coming up. And... Yeah, just a, yeah, I didn't really clean anything. I took a shop towel, I wiped off all the black stuff, and that's pretty much it. That's the only cleaning I did. Uh, but yeah, so please go watch my tips and tricks video. Go watch Big J's video. If you're really made motivated to take this all apart and put it back together and do your own maintenance, then Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. And I'll see you on the next one. Have fun plinking. Always wear iPro.